In this video, we're going to be talking about some basic magnetic uh, relationships. Uh, we'll be talking about the dipole moment here on this slide. And as we get into that discussion, just uh, kind of uh, dust off your um, basic physics and remember uh, that when we have a current which is running through a coil of wire, uh, that we generate a dipole magnetic uh, magnetic field. And um, the field lines, uh, the direction of the magnetic field intensity, uh, lines of magnetic field intensity, are defined by what we call the right-hand rule. And for the right-hand rule, we have, um, is given as basically grab a hold of the wire in which the current is flowing uh, with your right hand. And uh, uh, your thumb is pointing in the direction of current flow. In this case, the current is coming around and flowing into the screen, coming up through the coil, flowing out of the screen, and then off to the, off to the left. So in this case, we have our thumb pointing off to the right, and our fingers are pointing in the direction of the lines of magnetic field intensity. So they're pointing vertically upward through the core of the coil, and then they come down, uh, pointing vertically downward in the equatorial region uh, on either side of the dipole field. So this would be a typical way of representing the field. These would be the typical conventions for representing the field line orientations. Additional quantities associated with the coil are the cross-sectional area. So looking downward on this coil, we would see a circle of cross-sectional area A, and the length of the coil is represented by L. So we have a quantity referred to as the dipole moment, which is just the product of the pole strength times the length of the coil. And that is equal to the number of turns that we have in the coil times the current flowing through the coil times the cross-sectional area. So if we divide both sides by L, we get um, P is basically equal to NIA over L, and the units uh, of length cancel out. So we have units for the pole strength of ampere meter. This would be a standard international uh, or an SI unit of measure. So we'll be mixing, we'll, we'll refer to both standard international and CGS units, uh, mainly CGS units. So here is another basic idea that I think you're all familiar with or re recall from your basic physics is that you, um, if you have a, a coil of wire like this with a, a magnetic material in the, in the core, let's say a rod of iron, uh, if you turn on the field and increase the strength of magnetization here, that would be the increase the current flowing through the coil, you're going to increase the magnetic field which is induced in the, uh, you know, through the, the dipole field that, that's produced by the current moving through the coil. So the intensity of magnetization will increase up to a point referred to as the saturation point. And then when you, let's say if you try to retrace your steps and you reduce the intensity of the magnetizing field, it will drop back down, but it won't drop all the way down to zero. It will drop back down to some remnant uh, magnetization within the iron uh, core. So we can continue to, uh, we can reverse the direction of current flow and increase the intensity of current flow in that direction. And that will cause the intensity of magnetization to drop and it will drop down to some negative value, also a point of saturation here. And then we can go through the process in reverse again. We'll start the current going in the opposite direction and continue on up. Uh, and then we come back up to this plateau, this point of saturation. So this is referred to as the hysteresis loop and or hysteresis loop. And um, this phenomena is something that we usually don't have to worry about when we're 
working with magnetic fields in an exploration geophysics application. In an exploration geophysics application, we're often looking at this region here where if we increase the strength of the magnetizing field, you know, increase the uh, current flowing through the coil, we get an increase in the induced uh, in the intensity of magnetization here, but it's completely recoverable. When we decrease the intensity of the magnetizing field, the in intensity of magnetization drops off to zero. We can redu reduce the we can reverse the uh, uh, current direction, and the intensity of magnetization will go uh, into the negative direction. And again, when we reduce the intensity of the magnetizing field, it will come back to zero. So this relationship, as you can see, there's a linear relationship between the intensity of magnetization and the uh, magnetizing field strength. And this constant of proportionality here is referred to as the susceptibility. So we we are generally working in this region of the plot that we see over here, so we don't have to worry about hysteresis effects. And um, uh, we have a nice linear relationship between the intensity of magnetization and the intensity of the magnetizing field. The subscript E here is taken as the magnetic field intensity of the Earth. So now we have a, another definition for the intensity of magnetization, which is that I is just equal to the magnetic dipole moment per unit volume. So we know that M is equal to P times L, the dipole moment, P times L. So I is equal to PL over V. And we also know that since I is equal to K times F sub E, just this linear relationship that we have over here, that um, we can draw a, an equivalence between PL over V, which is equal to P over A, which is then equal to K times F sub E. And that gives us that P is equal to K times A times F sub E. Again, this is the magnetizing magnetic field intensity of the Earth. So the CGS units for pole strength P are ups, and the unit pole strength uh, can also be uh, expressed in terms of Ersted centimeter squared. K is a uh, dimensionless uh, constant, and uh, the area in the uh, CGS units is, is centimeter squared. So this is our a basic relationship for the uh, pole strength. And uh, working with this relationship, this is just one relationship, uh, we have, as we noted, that the pole strength is equal to the magnetic susceptibility times the cross-sectional area of the coil times the magnetizing field strength. And uh, But we also should recall from our earlier discussions that the field intensity uh, H or F is equal to P over R squared, the pole strength over R squared. This would be the distance to a test pole. So P then would be equal to F times R squared. Now, in basic, you know, the in basic physics, we know that the magnetic permeability is the ratio of B over H. And H is equal to B over mu. Now remember, mu with CGS units is just equal to 1. So we're going to refer to magnetic field intensity F as H in the remainder of our discussions, I should say for the most part, uh, unless we you know, specifically note otherwise. Uh, you know, I, should, I should point out that uh, F sub E will be traditionally used uh, for the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field, but uh, we will try to use this to kind of make a distinction between, uh, so that it doesn't get, hopefully doesn't get too confusing, we'll use H, which you may be more familiar with from your basic uh, physics. 
Uh, standard international units for P are the ampere meter, which we showed earlier on, and H has units of ampere per meter. So and I think you can see where the R squared if in meters using uh, standard international MKS units, uh, we would get ampere meters there. Now, an additional relationship is that P is equal to uh, HR squared, as we, as we sh showed. H is also equal to K times the magnetic uh, field intensity of the Earth types, or of the, the inducing coil in this case, uh, over R squared. So that we get P equal to K times A F sub B, an expression that we can also use for the magnetizing field of the Earth. So. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to continue to refer to the components of the Earth's main magnetic field using F sub E, since uh, it's, it's common in, in probably a cup, couple texts that you may be familiar with, those of Robinson and Carew, and also Berger, Sheehan, and Jones. So note also then that, um, you know, we're, we're, as we showed on the last slide, the field intensity is equal to the ratio of the force over, if we didn't show that on the last slide, just note that field intensity is also equal to the uh, ratio of the force. To confuse things even further, another F uh, divided by the test pole strength. So just kind of a units overview here. We have uh, H, field intensity, force per unit pole strength, P sub T. Uh, so we have H, force per pole strength. This could be dyne per ups. One dyne per ups is equal to one ersted in the CGS units. So we have H equal to P over R squared. So we can also get the units of H equal to ups per centimeter squared. And so we have one ersted would also be equal to one ups per centimeter squared. And we have that the pole strength is equal to h r squared. So we're multiplying this by something that has units of centimeter squared. So an ups would be one ersted centimeter squared. And we should also note that one ersted is equal to 10 to the fifth nanoteslas, and that one nanotesla is equal to one gamma. So as kind of a summary, we can see that we have units for the pole strength, which can be ampere meters in a standard international units uh, system, and uh, also ups or ersted centimeters squared in the CGS system of units. So the ne next time we're going to be taking a look at a problem which will allow us to kind of play around with these units. And so it's a problem that makes us think about magnetic field intensity and makes us, you know, what is the magnetic field intensity at this particular observation point. But we also have to wrestle with the units and uh, some conversions. So we'll talk about that on the next video. See you then.